What up, everybody? Um, I didn't want to react to this, but I think we should. Apparently, everybody, every Christian YouTuber is reacting to this. So that's why I didn't want to react to it, because you guys have probably already seen it already. You guys have probably seen this Mark Driscoll, Driscoll or Driscoll, whatever. Um, not really familiar with the guy. I think he has a YouTube channel or something like that. He's a pastor or preacher, I believe. I'm not familiar with a lot of evangelical things. Evangelical popular pastor, popular pastors or popular preachers or church churches. Not very, not very much because I'm Adventist and I don't really look at that type of stuff, content. I only look at things like that when it pops up in my YouTube uh, feeds. But Matt Walsh made a little reaction video to this Mark Driscoll fiasco with the stripper pole dancing stuff at a mega church or some church retreat for men. If you guys haven't already watched it or seen it, then don't worry about it. But for those of you guys who have, you guys already know what's going on with Mark Driscoll's situation. Let's take a look at what, um, actually what Matt Walsh has to say about this out of all people. Well, if you run a Christian church and you decide to hold a Christian conference, let's say a conference for men, uh, it's probably a bad sign if anything at the conference makes headlines or trends on Twitter. And if something does make headlines and it does trend, you certainly don't want those headlines to be shocking and sort of hilarious in a morbid and cringy and depressing way. Uh, you don't want it to be the kind of thing that people see and, and they raise their eyebrows and say, wait, what? That's generally not the type of reaction you hope for. And yet that is the reaction that I had and I think everyone else had this week when video from the Stronger Men's Conference in Missouri started circulating on social media. The first tweet I saw was from Kyle. Yeah, and this is a men's conference. <laughs> okay, I, I, this is a this is supposed to be for men for men, right? And the, I think that's what they they're marketing it as. And if it's for men, and you got a stripper, uh, I mean, I don't know if he's a stripper or whatever. Whatever the case may be, why is a grown man taking his shirt off in front of a bunch of men? The first tweet I saw was from Colin Rugg, and uh, here's what he posted, quote, Pastor Mark Driscoll gets kicked off stage at a men's conference after he calls out Pastor John Lindell for allowing a demonstration from a male stripper. Now, you read that and you think that there must be more to the story. Uh, indeed, there is. It's just that the full context doesn't make it much better than it sounds. Here's USA Today with more, quote, the Stronger Men's Conference, an annual event hosted by the James River Church, exists to inspire and equip men to live out God's vision for manhood to be the husbands, fathers, and leaders God has called them to be, according to a news release. It was held at the Great Southern Bank Arena on April 12th and 13th. Driscoll's remarks came following a performance from Alex Magala, a sword salt swallower who took off his shirt, climbed up a pole, and swallowed a sword live at the conference. Keep in mind that this is a Christian conference for men, Men specifically who are looking for guidance and inspiration to become better husbands and fathers. That's how they sell this thing. That's what they're there for. And this is how they apparently kick things off. Watch. I mean, what is this? 
What, 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 what is this? <laughs> oh, oh man, I mean, this is, this is not a laughing matter, but I just, I just find it hard to believe that this is happening at a men's conference, Christian men's conference, and there are men there sitting front row, like, like a, a yard away from this guy, and he's stripping... He's stripping in front of a, uh, of a pole, swallowing swords. <sighs> what do we, what do, what do we, what do you say? What, what, what can we, what, what can, what, what, <laughs> man, I, I don't even know what to say. What can you say about this? What, what, what is this? Uh, yo, if this is something that I don't even know if I want to watch the whole video, but if this if this is something that that you know, I mean, what can you say at this point? You know, I, I started off laughing because th this really caught me off guard. And um, it is, in a sense, as comical. But at the same time, I wonder what the Lord is thinking. If this is some kind of outreach or something, even that is not understandable. It's, it's just not understandable if this is some kind of outreach where you're trying to get a whole bunch of people in and maybe it's, you know, it, it, it puts it puts people on seats and then you can possibly evangelize and spread the gospel that way. But at the same time, Jesus Christ is the world's most successful evangelist. And he never had to do, he never had to entertain people in this way. He didn't do things that were unnecessary. Jesus Christ himself said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. If Jesus Christ is lifted up, he will draw all men unto me. There's this guy, and later on in the video, and I'm, I don't think I want to even show you guys, later on in the video, this guy climbs up the pole like a you know stripper, and I believe he was a male, he used to be a male stripper. You can tell. But this guy literally climbs up a pole and he is the one being lifted up. When Jesus Christ said, when I, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He's talking about him, his character. I mean, he was lifted up also, not on a pole, but on a tree. But this is not some entertainment. This is the Savior of the world. This is the, the Lord, our Lord and Savior being lifted up. Not, not that he was stripping but they took his clothes off of him to humiliate him. Not so that he can show off his muscles and his goodies and all these things. He, he, they took his clothes off him to, to humiliate him. They spat on him. They put a cr crown of thorns on him. And then they lifted him up. And he said, if I be lifted up, once you guys see me on the cross, I will be, I will be the one that draws all men unto me. This stripper with this stripper pole, um, climbing up this pole, is to definitely counter the lifting up of Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
pretty gay, let's be honest. Uh, and you notice like the older guys in the front row in ball caps and t-shirts, uh, the kinds of guys who, you know, they look like they enjoy nothing so much as cutting the lawn on a Saturday morning, and, and for good reason, just regular guys. And here is this Vegas sword swallower dramatically ripping off his shirt and climbing a stripper pole. And yes, this performer, Alex Magala, is apparently a former male stripper. Now, perhaps we can be generous enough to James River Church to assume that they didn't know that. I mean, this is an actual former male stripper ripping his shirt off and performing on a pole. So he did strip and then perform on a pole. It's like, it, I, it's not difficult to connect the dots here. In fact, I say he's a former male stripper, but I'm not even sure that the former qualification is true or not. I don't know. Now, whether he also still has his stripper side hustle going, I don't know. And it's irrelevant because like it's, again, connect the dots. When there's smoke, there's fire. And when there's a stripper taking a shirt off and performing on a pole, there's, well, there's something that doesn't belong at a Christian conference at least. But even putting the stripper stuff entirely to the side, the question still remains. Why would you think that a bunch of middle-aged men at a men's conference would want to see that? What about that performance is supposed to speak to men, much less inspire them in their walk with Christ? Even if this was just normal acrobatics, right? Let's just pretend that it was. I've never met a middle-aged man who has any real interest in acrobats. And I certainly haven't met a man who goes to a Christian conference in hopes of witnessing an acrobat, especially not one of the shirtless and male variety. And that's apparently how Mark Driscoll felt about it. And uh, he said so once he got on stage, only to then be thrown off stage and suffer his own rebuke by Pastor John Lindell. Let's watch this uh, altercation unfold. Let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you, and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. So John Lindell throws Matthew 18 at Driscoll, saying that he should have spoken to him privately. And in many circumstances, I would agree. I mean, I believe strongly in addressing things privately rather than publicly whenever possible. But in this case, when you're speaking at a public event and you strongly object to something that was done or said at that same event before you get on stage, it becomes necessary to address it publicly. If you don't want to be called out publicly at a Christian conference, don't invite male strippers to perform. It's, a, it's like a pretty simple equation. And if I had been invited to speak at that event, and I found out that my opening act was the dude dancing on a pole, I would have done exactly exactly as Mark Driscoll did. Yeah, the Matthew 18 thing, um, if something was done privately, then yes, private 
private, uh, there, there should have been a private talk. Uh, but since it was done publicly, what do you do? I mean, if it's done publicly, people are already, it's already exposed. It's already out there. People are, people are already talking about it. So it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter whether it's Mark, uh, Mark the Mark guy or some other guy, someone's going to say something about it because it's already public. If it was private, it was just between him and just between him and Mark, then yeah, there probably needs to be, or, or not just between him and, and Mark, but if just a small group of people uh, were involved, then yeah, maybe private, privately, they could have talked. Um, but since a whole bunch of people are, are involved and people are watching this, you 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 have to address it publicly you got to address it address address it publicly um and not only that it's it's open for anybody to address if it's public it's open for anybody to address especially if it's out there on youtube and it's making its rounds and people are seeing this um but he did say you know that mark talked to him for 30 minutes before before he came out how come he didn't say anything? Yeah, that's also that's also I I also probably would have said something, um, but also at the same time, Mark is probably thinking, well, if I say something, he's gonna stop me from going on on stage, and I'm I won't be able to address this issue in front of everybody here, and they need to hear this thing. Um, if I was in his shoes, I, pro I probably would not have talked to John Lindell or L Lindell or whatever his name is privately. First, I would tell him though, like I would, I would say, hey, John, I have something to talk to you about after, uh, after you know, after all this or whatever, and then went on stage, and then said my piece, and then and now then you can then give him the reason why um, you did that is because you, pr John, if you, if you, if I would have talked to you before I got on stage, you probably would have you know kicked me out before I could even address the issue. That's what I probably would have would have done. But yes, it needed a public rebuke, right? Public sins, public rebuke. Private sins, private rebuke. Um, so the, the Matthew 18 thing, it gets kind of, it gets a little dicey, right? It really depends on the situation. Um, there's something else. There's something else to this. It's it's awesome that you know you see this guy Mark Mark uh, what's his name Mark um, Mark Dris, Driscoll address this on stage in front of all the people there, right? And then John Lindo came out, and then he, you know, he, he was getting booed off stage or something like that. He, they were telling him to get off the platform, um, and they were people were mad, right? People were, obviously, they were phys uh, uh, vis visually, visibly upset, and you could, verbally, and you could even uh, audibly, you know, hear their frustration with him, right? They're telling him to get off the stage, I think they were booing him, they were yelling and things like that. But here's the here's the thing also. If we have time, we let, let's keep going with this, but if we have time later on, I can show you guys another video that kind of it puts a whole it, it puts a twist to this whole thing. Let's keep going with Matt Matt's thoughts on this and then let's take a look at another video. If I didn't say anything, it would seem like I was a willing party to this spectacle. Now, it's clear that Driscoll is in the right. Lindell is, a, you know, desperately in the wrong. And everyone involved in hiring the former male stripper, or perhaps not so former, I don't know, uh, should be fired or, or, or should resign. I mean, that much is obvious to any thinking person. But what might be less obvious is the why here. Why would they do this? Like, how is this mistake made? Assume, assuming again that it was a mistake, assuming that they didn't actually intend to hire a stripper, which, which I still think is a safe assumption, though perhaps I'm giving too much grace to them with my interpretation. Yet assuming it was a mistake, how was that mistake made? How did James River Church end up in this situation? Well, it's not, it's not really hard to see how. 
Because you go back to that video of Driscoll and Lindell, you notice the decor in the background of the arena. The, the backdrop for the stage is a giant picture of a motorcycle. Why is there a 50-foot motorcycle picture up on the stage? What does that have to do with inspiring Christian men to be better fathers and husbands? Now, there's obviously nothing morally objectionable about a picture of a motorcycle, but it does seem sort of random and ridiculous. Speaking of which, consider this video from last year's uh, Stronger Men's Conference, because they've been doing this for, I don't know how many years, several years. And um, at last year's event, there were no strippers, as far as I know. But they did have this. Watch. Okay, um, just to review what we watched or describe it for the audio listeners deprived of that, uh, deprived of, of, of the visuals there. Um, that was a guy in a tank shooting fake guns in the air while riding over a bunch of cars as fire shot out of the ground and an 80s hair metal band played a song from the Top Gun soundtrack. The only thing they were missing was Chuck Norris chugging light beer while barbecuing steaks over a gas grill and they would have crammed all of the corniest male cliches into one performance. That was like, it was a parody of the modern church's outreach to men. If Luke Wilson's character in Idiocracy has, had visited a mega church in that movie, the scene would have looked exactly like that. You, you could take that in its entirety and drop it right into that movie, and you wouldn't need to change anything. It, it's so lame and cringy that it's funny, and then it dives deeper into the lameness and cringiness, and it stops being funny. But then it goes deeper still, and it's funny again, just not in any way that the church would have intended. Yeah, I don't see what, why is it. Why was it necessary? Why, why is it necessary for uh, an evangelistic meeting or a men's ministry meeting to have these things? Why? Why is it necessary? They're just wasting money there. That's four cars you could have given away to someone who didn't, to people who didn't, don't have cars. Why do you have to pay X amount of money to get a tank in the stadium? Are we not being good stewards with our money? The, the, how much did this thing cost? <laughs> oh man, I mean... With the, with the cost of this thing, couldn't you do something productive with the money? Anyways, yeah, so honestly, as an as a, as a Adventist, not really surprised. If this was an Adventist, you know, convention, then it would be very shocking. It would be very, very shocking if this was an Adventist convention or conference. This would be very shocking. But since, not saying that we're, we're any better or anything like that, because we have some things going on in our church, in our churches also today that is spiritually Babylonian. Um, there are some Adventist churches today that you know they're 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 out there they're in the sanctuary, dancing and, uh, you know, playing um, songs that 
should be played in the Adventist church, in, in this, in, especially in the sanctuary. Um, we have people in the church who don't know anything about, well, I, I wouldn't say don't know anything about um, dress reform. They should know about dress reform, but then, you know, they're dressing in a way that is very provocative. So I'm not saying that we're any morally better than any Christian denomination out there. I mean, we're all sinners, but still, <laughs> this <laughs> we should know how to conduct ourselves, especially when it comes to Christian conferences and meetings and stuff. We should keep it Christian and not some kind of some form of entertainment. Salvation is not some kind of entertainment. It's not some kind of, it's not something, some sitcom that you watch on TV and ha 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 ha, laugh at it. No. Salvation, Christ died for, someone died. Someone had to give up their eternal, someone had to risk their eternal life for us. That's not a joke. It's, it's, it's no joke. It's not some form of entertainment. But here's the thing, man. Here's here's the twist of t to this whole thing. Watch this. Okay, so we're going to watch this video. Now remember, Mark went on stage and pretty much rebuked everybody. Well, not <laughs> not everybody, but re rebuked He gave a rebuke, okay? He gave a rebuke. And people were cheering for him. You know, people people were upset that they're, you know, they, oh yeah, we've been duped. There's this guy that's on a pole and he's stripping and swallowing swords. Yeah, and then John Lindo came out and said, hey, you're out of line, Mark, and pretty much kicked him off stage. And then the crowd seemed to not like that. And they were telling John to get off the stage or get off, get off the platform. Um, and so they were angry at him, right? So that just happened. Now watch this, remember that. Now watch this video. Mark's a prophetic voice to our generation. Nothing about what was said changes that. And I, Mark and I talked. We went outside where we could be alone and we could talk. And we reaffirmed our friendship. And Mark, I want you to know you're a gift to the kingdom. Yeah. You're a gift to James River. Yeah. You've been a gift to Debbie and I. You've helped us in things. You've been kind to my family, mentored my sons. And I love you. And I, I told Mark, listen, he says, I'll do whatever you want. I said, well, if you're willing, and we can come in and talk, and we'll let him talk to you in a moment. If you're willing, I want you to speak again. I want to find out about Elijah. Yeah. This is the greatest men's event, I believe, in the country right now. And it's stayed pure for a long time. And I, I want to thank you for having such a great heart for men. And I want to thank you that it starts with your sons. Um, no, 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 no. We're not going to do division. What we're going to do is we're going to try and model how brothers can go through different ways. Okay, so... It seems like John didn't repent for clearly what he did wrong. <laughs> and Mark said that this is the greatest men's ministry or men's event conference or whatever. Um, using what standard? Like, what, what, what? I think they have boxing matches here. Boxing at a Christian men's. Remember what the, remember what the Bible says. So so they okay. so they have boxing matches. I used to be a, a, a Muay Thai kickboxer. Okay, and watching fights used to really amp me up. Okay. Remember the Bible says, by beholding, you become changed. If you, beho if you behold Christ, you become changed to his character. 
if you behold Kobe Bryant, who did Kobe Bryant behold? He beheld Michael Jordan. And Kobe Bryant is like a carbon copy of Michael Jordan. Okay? If you're beholding boxing matches, what happens to you? You become... It's very possible that mentally you can, you, you, you can become violent. You can become violent, like your mindset can be violent. It's very possible. So why do we, so, so this is the greatest men's ministry or this is the greatest men's event, Christian event. Using what standard? What standard are we using? Why? Because we have monster trucks and tanks and, and, and things like that and rock and roll bands. Is that why? If any men's ministry is the greatest men's ministry is because Jesus Christ is the, the, the center of that men's ministry. It seems like the, the center of this whole men's ministry here is entertainment. That's what it seems like to me. Now, I'm not sure what else they do there. There could be some, some things there that, that allow for spiritual growth in people and things like that. Okay. But what I see so far, what, what we've seen so far, this is not, to me, uh, when it comes to spirituality or being uh, a spirit-led men's event, to me, this is not the greatest. It, it's not the greatest. I like what he said that, hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do division here. We're gonna model. What we're gonna do is we're gonna model how brothers should um, interact with each other, right? But at the same time, did John repent? Did he get on, gonna get on his knees and publicly, you know, ask the Lord for forgiveness there publicly and repented of, of this thing? Did he even acknowledge that this thing is a, is a sin? Did he acknowledge that this thing should not be there? Did he acknowledge all these all these things? It seems like he didn't. Um, and now Mark is back on stage with John and what is he getting ready to do now? Is he going to say, hey, but you know, this is still wrong? Or, let's take a look. I believe what I should have done since I had another session, I was thinking about it. It wasn't in my notes. I didn't intend to go there. I was up late praying for the men. I just kept seeing it. And I should have, between sessions, talked to you rather than just verbal processing on the stage. And as the father and the head of the house, you could have given me a thumbs up or down. And I need to honor that as, um, as spiritual authority. I honor your spiritual authority. That was that. Um, and so, I apologize to you for not going that route, which would have led us from the most awkward moment in the history of any men's event. <laughs> okay, so he apologizes to him. All right, so so <laughs> so he's saying, okay, so 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 it started off with the Jezebel spirit, right? The Jezebel spirit, hey, Jezebel spirit is here. There's this guy dancing on a pole and stripping and sword in his mouth, okay? Why, right? Jezebel spirit. It seemed like, and he and John said earlier, it seemed like Mark Driscoll was, was going to talk about Elijah. If we're talking about the Jezebel spirit and Mark Driscoll was gonna be, what was going to be talking about Elijah, that could have been his Elijah moment right there where Elijah rebukes Ahab. Remember what Elijah said to Ahab? Hey, hey man, if, you, if you're going to continue doing this, if you're going to continue disobeying God, there will be no dew, no rain. You know what dew or rain, you, you know what that means in the Bible? No dew, no rain. I mean, there was, there were little, there was literally no dew or rain during that time when Elijah told Ahab that there's not going to be dew nor rain for three and a half years. That, was, that literally happened. But no dew nor rain means no Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit. That was his Elijah moment right there. And he apologizes. He apologizes. Imagine Elijah coming back 
speaking with King Ahab and, sa and saying, hey, Ahab, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. My apologies. <laughs> So this guy apologizes. And not only that, the crowd is cheering. First of all, you guys are booing John Lindell or Lindell or whatever off stage not too long ago. Because you guys, I thought you knew that this is wrong, right? This is something, there, there's there's something wrong here. There's a, there's a guy stripping, he's on a pole, sword in his mouth. What's going on here? This, this shouldn't be happening. And now we're cheering? Well, is, there, is he going to address the issue? Is he going to say something? Is he going to say that there's something? So the whole crowd, I'm not saying the whole crowd, but I mean, there's still people there. I would have left. <laughs> I would have already just been like, "What is this? I'm I'm out of here." Um, but uh, there's still people there, so they're pretty much uh, what do you call those accessory to the crime, or, or what do you call that? Accessories to the crime. What are we? What is what is going on? Like, what? Why are we're just gonna go with what what's going on on stage? First, ah, oh, you know, outrage and blah blah blah, and now, ah, oh, they're they they made up, ah, oh, nice. But still, there's this thing. There's this stripper that just came here and danced on a pole with a sword in his mouth. That was that. It's okay now because they made up. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I just, I. That's not to me. It's like, nope, not not coming here no more. <laughs> you know what Satan intends at times for evil, and always division, even over. I don't. Over, I don't want division. And, no, and I, no. But, but yeah. here's what I'm saying is, what sometimes Christian brothers can feel strongly about things that, and there's a difference. Right. You know, there are some things. There have to be differences over the things that matter. We agree on. Well, say exactly. The, the charity and everything else. And guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. This may be the most important thing you'll see at Stronger. Outside. Yeah. I say too many times, brothers walk away from one another. And Mark, my commitment is, I'm not walking away from you. You're a prophetic gift to the church. Okay. <laughs> So the, okay, all right, I think I'm done with this. I think I'm done because they're, they're saying that, um, you know, they don't want division. Well, Mark is saying that he doesn't want division. And um, John is saying, no, it's not, it's not that there's division. It's just there's a difference uh, in your belief. And there's, there's a difference between, uh, you know, and, and he said that this is a small thing. I believe is what he said. He's, he, he's implying that this, these are small things. I don't think that this is a small thing. I think this you know, allowing a you know gay or homosexual um, stripper uh, into an event, into a men's event, for what reason I don't know. Um, wasn't even necessary. Not only that, it's this. This is it's provocative. It's not. It's not. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't edify anybody, right? It doesn't edify anybody. Watching someone strip on a pole, it doesn't edify anybody. It doesn't edify a men's group. So why are we doing it? So if if there is a difference between John and, and Mark, and that's the difference, and they're okay with it, that no, we can, that 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 can't be. <laughs> it's not Christian at all. It can't be. I mean, there are some things that you can you can you can. There are differences. You know, let's say you don't, you, let's say, you know, I, I eat vegetables, okay? I'm high, raw, plant-based. Um, and you might eat chicken. That's a difference that, you know, that's, that's, that's a difference that that's okay. 
that's fine. You want to eat chicken, then eat chicken. Um, you know, that's between you and the Lord. But if you're over here hiring a stripper to dance on a pole, um, that's a big difference. That's something that I don't want to, I, I don't want to support that. And if I, if you ask me to speak at your event, even if I, even, even when I rebuke you and you still invite me to speak at your event, I will continue to talk about it. And I will continue to, 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 to give you guys a Bible, a Bible study on why this shouldn't be. Yeah. So I'm done with this. The Bible does say that there's going to be a great falling away. A great apostasy. I don't want to bring any more attention to to this situation, but if you guys feel like you have to share this video, please like and share this video. If you guys want to support this ministry, you can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. The links are in the description box below, schoolforprofits.tv or sfp.center. Link is in the description box below. I do ministry full time. This is what I do to support my family and to support my ministry. So donations do help keep this ministry afloat. The SFP Swordsmith Stage 1, which is a Bible study course that I'm doing. If you guys want to study the way that I study, the link for that is in the description box below. Or recently, the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia has been very popular. So if you guys want one of those, you guys want to learn more about diseases, natural remedies for those diseases, you guys can buy a Natural Remedies Encyclopedia package. Link is in the description box below, sfp.center. You guys can find it there too. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for supporting. I'm out. Praise God always. See you guys on the next one. Peace.